Ohio State football has a full-time starting quarterback as of Tuesday morning. Nathan Baird from Cleveland.com. It's not me. Nathan Baird from Cleveland.com. Stephen Means. Andrew Gillis. It's Kyle McCord, which everyone knew was an announcement that was probably coming today from Ryan Day. It was just a matter of whether we knew it was going to happen for Saturday's game. Was he going to do it? Was he going to play coy? Today he just came out and said it. And as I said after the game, I thought that there are repercussions, uh, positive repercussions to doing it that are more than just what the depth chart says, that it, it affects every area. And I think Ryan Day ultimately agreed with that. But Andrew, is this the right decision to fully go with Kyle McCord right now? Or should they keep trying to see how much they can get out of Devin Brown? Uh, it's the right decision for two reasons. Uh, number one, is anybody going to dispute that Kyle McCord has been the better quarterback? Like, has anybody seen anything from Devin Brown that is going to say, this guy deserves more of a look, this guy deserves more run? No, Kyle McCord, he improved from week one to week two, looked better, I thought, just looked more comfortable. That's a guy you want to stick with early. The second thing is something that I've kind of been – I've had it in my head for a few days now. Ryan Day has talked a lot about – the shortening of games, the shortening of possessions, the shortening of plays. And you can quibble with that. If the efficiency numbers are down, that's fine. That's that's all fine and well. The thing that I'm curious about, though, if you only are going to have nine possessions or ten possessions, they only had nine, not, in, not counting the game-ending kneel down against uh, Youngstown State. If you only have nine, are you willing to give three possessions to a backup quarterback or whatever the number would be? Are you willing to give a certain amount of plays to a backup quarterback? So I think just right now, with the way Kyle McCord is playing, with the challenges that this offense has faced, you want to get this guy as many reps as possible, and you got to maximize the possessions that you have. So, yeah, 100% the right call. I mean, I think it's fine to give a third of the of the snaps to a backup if you're blowing somebody out sure. and they're playing the last third of the game. But we're talking about, you know, that, that the timeshare. And for me, as I said after the game, the timeshare of the game is less important than the timeshare of today and tomorrow and Thursday, the, the, game, the timeshare of the week. And, Stephen, do you think it's important – as Ryan Day seemed to, you know, intimate today, that putting naming Kyle McCord the full time starter is a message throughout this whole roster. It's not just again, like I said, it's not just because he was already starting and he was already playing more possessions. Even though Brown played more plays against Youngstown State, McCord played, as you said, six of the nine possessions. So that was already happening. Do you believe in like the the exponential benefits of this decision? Yes, because it's one voice. I mean, Devin Brown and Kyle McCord, talk, the first time we talked to them before fall camp started, they both brought up the idea of they both have already kind of been working on their leadership styles. It's just this is CJ's team. So you don't want to step on CJ's toes because he comes first. CJ's gone and somebody needs to fill that void. And they spent the last nine months trying to fill that void. Now that Ryan Day has come out publicly, he did say that he knew after Saturday. The coaching staff kind of knew after Saturday, but it didn't feel right to announce it right then and there. They wanted to go look at the film and whatnot. But – you can get behind one guy now. Everybody's going to get behind Kyle McCord, and that's whether it's in the locker room, that's out just in the world, that's when they're at practice, that's putting together a game plan as a play caller and as an offensive coaching staff. All of that matters now because we talked about this on the Monday pod, Nathan, how there were times where it felt like they were calling two different sets of plays for Kyle McCord and Devin Brown. That's almost two different sets of game plans. Now you have one game plan for one guy, and you have a whole week to, play, to prepare for another team before you have to go play a ranked opponent in the following week. It, to me, it's this simple. Kyle McCord has to get better. Like, he's not a finished product by any means. Neither was Justin Fields two games into his Ohio State career. Neither was C.J. Stroud two games into his Ohio State career. And I know Kyle McCord's been here longer than that, but we're talking about as, as the real starting quarterback. And he's got to get better. And what's the best way to help him get better? To give him as many reps as you can give him in practice these next two weeks. And the next two teams that Ohio State plays has no question about who their starting quarterback is. Austin Reed from Western Kentucky led the nation in passing yards last year. Sam Hartman started his first game at Wake Forest when Kyle McCord was a sophomore in high school. He's still starting games at in college has thrown a ton of yards and touchdowns and is a veteran presence and Ohio State needs that kind of poise and confidence in that position when it takes the field especially when it goes up to Notre Dame Stadium in a couple weeks a lot more discussion about this on Buckeye Talk and get the text 614-350-3315 as soon as Ryan Day finally said Common Court is a starter Andrew was sending it to you right into your phone from Buckeye Talk